Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. And here we're going to look at the use of the TI Inspire to explore polar curves using calculus. We're going to a function graphing window, but we're going to change over to polar. To do that, we'll need to pull up the menu and choose Graph Entry Edit. That's going to let us change the plot type from function to polar, number 5. Now we're presented with formulas of the form r of theta. So for our first curve, r1 of theta, we're going to use a curve that was featured in the 2017 BC exam, question 2. And that polar curve was described as 1 plus the sine of theta times the cosine of 2 theta. So we're going to type that in using the uh, trig menu and we are using the symbol menu to pick up the symbol theta. So here we've got r1 of theta equals 1 plus sine of theta cosine of 2 theta. And now we're also going to want to change our theta range to match that of the curve that as was presented in the problem. Instead of from going from theta 0 to 2 pi, we're going to go from 0 to pi over 2. So I'm editing that range for theta to 0 to pi over 2. And the theta step is the increment that will be used for plotting. We're going to change that to pi over 60. It's convenient to use a denominator for pi that's a multiple of both 4 and 6. We've entered that and graphed it. And there we've got the nice polar curve. I'm going to move the label up here where we can see it, but it's out of the way of the curve. And now we're going to go back to our graph entry menu and select another curve. This one we already had entered in it was r2 of theta equals 2 cosine theta with the same range in the theta step. Okay, let's actually do a computation with the polar functions. We're going over to a calculator page and one of the questions in BC2 asked for the area that was enclosed by that first curve, the blue one, and the x-axis. Now the formula for the area in enclosed by a polar curve is one-half the integral of the range of theta of the square of the polar curve function. So that means we're going to take one-half of the integral from 0 to pi over 2. So we're entering our limits of integration into our integral template. And our integrand is going to be r1 of theta quantity squared. So let's enter that, r1 of theta. And then once we have the integrand entered, it's r1 of theta squared. Our last step is to enter the variable of integration, which in this case is theta. And then we'll be ready to enter and see the calculation. Now because this is a computer algebra system machine, or CAS machine, notice that it's expressed in an exact form, this 15 pi minus 16 all over 48. If we want to see that in decimal form, we'll just pull up the answer and do the uh, control shift of enter to get the decimal approximation. And that's what would have been expected presented as an answer on the exam. Okay, let's look at some other things we could do with these polar curves. I've gone back to the graphing window and I want to do some tracing. But first I want to change the trace step to match the theta step that we used for these curves. So I'm changing the trace step to pi over 60 and now I'm going to go back to the trace from the menu and then we're going to trace each of these two curves. So I've turned on the graph trace and now the increment on the trace is matching up with the, what we used for plotting. And so now as I uh, hit the right arrow key that actually advances theta we're tracing along the first curve R1 of theta if I want to switch to the other curve, I can use either the up or down arrows, switch over to the other curve, and we'll be tracing using that same increment. So now I'm tracing the second curve, R2 of theta, another press of the up down arrow, will get us back to the first curve, R1 of theta. Now if you'd like to go to a very specific value of theta, you can just type that in and hit enter. In this case, I've typed in pi over 3, hit enter, and that's put me specifically at that point corresponding to that angle. 
if I hit enter again, it's going to place a point where the at the current location of the trace crosshairs. And now I can see the X and Y coordinates at that point and compare those to the polar coordinates that are shown down below when with, with trace on. All right, now let's suppose that we also wanted to do a tangent line. So I'm going to pull up the geometry menu and choose the submenu points and lines. Down there on number seven is tangent. That's going to give us a tangent line to the point we select. So I'm going to pick that point we just uh, dropped on the curve. Now we have a tangent line. Not only that, we have an equation for it. It's a little bit obscure, so I'm going to drag it down here where we can see it clearly. And there's the equation for the tangent line at that point. Now what's really neat is this point on the curve is actually movable. And so if I grab that point and start moving it along the curve, notice that the coordinates are being updated as well as the equation for the tangent line. Now as we look at these different tangent line equations, notice that we're getting two values of theta for which the tangent line appears to be almost vertical. And that's the question I'd like to pose. Is there a value of theta for which the tangent line is actually vertical? Now to get at that question, we need to review a little bit of calculus. So let's go to this notes page and remember that if r of theta is differentiable, you could express x and y as functions of theta. y of theta is r of theta sine theta, x of theta is r of theta cosine theta. Then using chain and product rules, dy over dx would be dy over d theta over dx over d theta. And then we can actually express this in terms of theta. Now if dx d theta is zero and dy d theta is not zero, that's a place where the tangent line would be vertical. So what I've done is I've taken that denominator for dx d theta, set it equal to zero, and I'd like to solve for theta. Now our range is, for theta is restricted, so I also want to use the such that or where symbol, that's that vertical bar, and put the inequality that will express the range of theta that we're interested in. That's zero less than theta less than pi over two. And notice I'm just entering that like I would a compound inequality, just writing it down. And so we're going to solve for dx d theta equal to zero in the range for our polar curve. Let's enter that and see what kind of solution we get. Now we get actually a couple of solutions. One of them looks like, well, it actually looks like pi divided by 10. That little warning symbol, if we click on that, it says, reminds us that these calculations were approximate. Okay, so let's actually take a look. Let's go back to the trace menu and actually take a look at pi over 10 for theta. Does that really put us where that line, tangent line looked vertical? So I'll type in pi over 10 and the trace cursor, when I hit enter, pops right over there. Well, that winds up this video. Uh, for other resources like these, please visit education.di.com.